Welcome to the Cataraqui Woods Dental Implant Institute, a nonprofit organization dedicated to furthering both education and research in the field of oral implantology. My name is Dr. Waji Khan. I also run the Top Gun Dental Implant Study Club. To join, please visit our Facebook site via the website www.topgundisc.com. So today we have a case presentation which is about using uh, onlay bone grafting using the Meisinger transfer control kit. And the reason I'm featuring this transfer control kit, there's lots of kits out there and basically what it is in essence is a, is a trephine and a, and a burr uh, which you can get from other sources as well. But it, it sort of introduces a concept uh, by which it becomes a little bit more easy to perform onlay bone grafting in patients and we'll have a case presentation to demonstrate uh, the use of this kit. So the patient we have today is a 42 year old healthy female who basically has broken uh, an inlay bridge which she's had for about 20 years from her lower right second premolar to the lower right second molar basically uh, uh, providing uh, function uh, for the missing uh, lower right first molar. So she's seeking an implant solution. However, uh, upon examination of her site, she basically has inadequate bone width in the coronal third of the site. So options to improve this bone width for her include, well, no treatment is, would be one, and just go back with another inlay bridge. But in her case, she wants an implant. And so ridge splitting, onlay bone grafting, or some sort of IPRF particulate grafting are options for her. So in this photograph, you can see uh, just from the, this panorex, uh, that there is an adequate bone height from in the 4-6 region. The root forms are adequate. I can assure you that there's a sufficient interarch clearance and that we're nowhere near that inferior alveolar nerve. However, when you take a look at the photograph, you can see that there is inadequate bone width. Uh, you don't need to be uh, have a CT scan here to uh, determine that the width is going to be inadequate. So uh, the treatment plan for her basically is going to be, after consent process, would be to perform an onlay bone graft using a lag screw technique and the Meisinger transfer control kit. Uh, particulate bone grafting with IPR with APRF on top and then allowing uh, basically four to six months for healing and at which point in time we're going to remove the screw and place an implant for her. So once again here is our surgical site. Uh, we basically make a full thickness flap exposing uh, that bone and from this picture you can see that there is an adequate amount of bone when you get about say halfway down where our proposed implant site is going to be. It's just that coronal third is inadequate. So we're going to augment that using this Meisinger transfer control kit. Basically I said it's kind of a bit of a lock and key. So I'm going to be using the two burrs uh, in the back row on the right. So one is a five millimeter trephin and one is just a five millimeter burr. So basically you use the trephin burr to create your uh, donor bone out of a piece of, in, in this case we're going to be using ilium strip, so we'll have a cancellous and cortical component to it. And then more or less you use the other burr there to prepare the recipient site. And then once you've done that, you basically will have a piece of bone that will fit like a lock and key into place as you will see. So we basically to use that preparation burr, as you can see in this case here, uh, we've basically made a notch inside that coronal third of bone. Uh, the only issue here is that we didn't sort of pierce the cortical bone. So I needed to use a few other burrs to basically to uh, pierce through that cortical bone in order to get this bleeding from the cancellous marrow that we're going to require for adequate healing of this site. Then we take the prepared bo uh, bone using a 702 burr, which is going to basically allow a passive fit of a screw uh, through uh, this uh, through this channel. We use another burr to basically prepare the uh, site, uh, the donor site, and then basically using a lag screw technique, we engage this piece of bone into that area. So you can see that there's going to be uh, a bit of a, a osseous defect. If we just go place an implant, we're going to have a nice little cylinder to place an implant there, but there's going to be a bit of an osseous defect on the mesial and distal aspects uh, of this. So we basically go ahead and proceed uh, knowing that the, uh, the, the only bone graft is going to be basically providing a nice shield uh, for pressure and tissue uh, after performing a bit of a release uh, of the periosteum to allow advancement of the flap, we go ahead and place particulate bone graft. In this case, this is a mineralized cortical cancellous 250 to 1000 micrometer particle size allograft, which we've also added uh, IPRF to in order to give it uh, some rigidity, at which point in time we cover all of this uh, with the plate which fiber membrane under mining the tissue on the lingual aspect and allowing a suture to sort of guide that in place in order to provide a bit of a shield for all of this and then basically achieve primary closure uh, by advancement of the flap and the placement of three uh, interrupted uh, in this case silk sutures and if on the radiograph you can see what we've sort of done here and the panoral radiograph will demonstrate the same sort of thing. 
So we're going to go back in about uh, six months time and we'll be basically able to take that screw out. A little trick I like to use is basically take the screw out and have this not out all the way, but basically use it to sort of just tent and hold the flap open while we go ahead and place the implant. Uh, I will update this uh, video uh, on Top Gun. Uh, when uh, that, that time does come. Uh, this is just another photograph of another transfer control kit that Meisinger does offer. Just a few more bells and whistles to this. Uh, the one that I showed is around a bit, about five or six hundred dollars US. This one here I believe is in the thousand to two thousand dollar range. Both of them basically achieve the same thing. Uh, anecdotally from my own personal experience we basically just end up using the large burr and the large uh, preparation burr uh, anyway so in, in, in essence that's all you really need to order but if you want to if you like if you like toys and you like having kits this is an excellent kit to obtain post-op checklist for the patient so basically ensure that the transitional prosthesis for the patient if present is placed uh, that post-op instructions are provided for the patient in terms of care of the surgical site oral hygiene and rinses uh, that post-op medications are provided in the form of analgesics and antibiotics. Uh, post-op follow-up appointment has been scheduled just to make sure that everything's going well and that the patient is fit for discharge with the responsible adult or escort. So on behalf of the Cataraqui Woods Dental Implant Institute and the Top Gun Dental Implant Study Club, I want to thank you for listening in to this case presentation.